the major worldwide movement that champions a one-world government, folks, under a religious leader is a new phenomenon occurring worldwide called the New Age Movement, a creation of Freemasonry. The newspaper put out by the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry is called The New Age. Tex Mars, a researcher into this new religion, has written two books on the subject. Both of these books are excellent primers for those who wish to know more about the beliefs of this religion. The two books are entitled Dark Secrets of the New Age and Mystery Mark of the New Age, and he has written, quote, The New Age movement has undeniably taken on the definite form of a religion, of course, because it is Mystery Babylon. He goes on to say, complete with an agreed-upon body of doctrine, printed scripture, a pattern of worship and ritual, a functioning group of ministers and lay leaders, unquote. Another writer who has written two books on the New Age religion is Constance Cumbie. Her two books are called The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow and A Planned Deception. She has written this, quote, The New Age movement is a religion, complete with its own Bibles, prayers, and mantras. Vatican City, Jerusalem equivalents, priests and gurus, born-again experiences, they call it rebirthing, spiritual laws and commandments, psychics and prophets, and nearly every other indicia of a religion, unquote. The new religion has a series of leaders. One is a woman named Alice Bailey, a prolific writer on the subject of the New Age. She was the founder of an organization called the Arcane School, one of the major loosest trust divisions. The Lucis Trust was a major publisher of books supporting the religion and published a newsletter or newspaper called Lucifer. In her book entitled The Externalization of the Hierarchy, she told her readers who the organizations were that were going to bring the New Age religion to the world and she identified them as being, quote, the three main channels through which the preparation for the New Age is going on might be regarded as the church, the Masonic fraternity, and the educational field. And folks, that is exactly who is bringing it to realization. The main thrust of this program is going to be to examine only one of the three organizations mentioned by Alice Bailey. That being the Masonic Fraternity. There are numerous works by other writers, lecturers, researchers, exposing the involvement of the church in the educational field in the New Age movement and in the New World Order. So I'm not going to attempt to duplicate those efforts. However, only a few are aware of the involvement of the Freemasons, and that is why I have chosen to concentrate on that organization, Mystery Babylon. And the reason I'm concentrating on that organization is because it is their members who have infiltrated the church and the educational field who control those other two organizations. So really there's only one organization that needs to be dealt with, and that is Freemasonry. Another major writer on the New Age movement is Benjamin Krim, and he admitted in his book entitled The Reappearance of the Christ and the Masters of Wisdom that, quote, the new religion will manifest, for instance, through organizations like Masonry. In Freemasonry is embedded the core of the secret of the occult mysteries." Unquote. So, Masonry conceals a great mystery inside its temples, one that is connected somehow to the New Age movement. The Masons admit in some of their writings that they too are anticipating a new age, a series of major changes. Henry Clausen, the past sovereign grand commander, the equivalent of their president of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, has been quoted as saying this, Quote, we look towards a transforming into a new age using, however, the insight and wisdom of the ancient mystics, unquote. The Masons claim that the things that they believe in are as old as the ancient civilizations. They also claim that these mystics, the ancient philosophers, had the wisdom of all ages and that somehow this knowledge has become lost through the centuries. Humanity today does not possess this knowledge, but it has become the task of the Masons and other truth seekers who turn out in every case of investigation to be liars and deceivers and manipulators to rediscover these principles for the benefit of all mankind. Those possessing this knowledge will correct the world's current problems. Some of the Masons also claim to have identified the cause of these problems. One of the most prolific writers on the subject of this lost truth 
as I have mentioned earlier, is Manley T. Hall, a 33rd degree Mason. For those unfamiliar with the Masonic degrees, all Masons in America start through what is called the Blue Lodge, consisting of only three degrees. A Master Mason is of the third degree and really knows nothing, even though he thinks that he has been illumined, and I get letters from them all the time. I'm a Master Mason, and I never heard of any of the stuff that you're talking about. <laughs> Oh, boy. I, it, it amazes me, folks. It just absolutely amazes me that people are so stupid. Drives me wild. The initiate into the Blue Lodge goes through three separate and different initiation ceremonies, one for each degree. After completing these ceremonies, he may stay where he is or choose to affili affiliate himself with either the York Rite, which has 13 degrees, or the Scottish Rite, which has 32, and then the Meritorious 33rd. The latter is divided into two separate jurisdictions, the Southern and the Northern. And these are based primarily on state borders, and whether one joins one or the other depends on where the initiate lives. The two Scottish Rites have an additional 29 degrees, making for a total of 32. There is one more degree called the 33rd degree, which is honorary, and only a few are invited into that degree, and to even be considered, they must perform some major work toward the completion of the great work, which is the plan to bring about. The utopia on earth, the socialist dream, York Rite has a total of nine degrees. However, since little has been revealed about this order, we will concentrate on only the Scottish Rite, and in particular, the southern jurisdiction. Well, I've since discovered that the York Rite has a total of 13 degrees, folks, not just nine. Mr. Hall has written a book entitled Lectures on Ancient Philosophy, in which he talks a great deal about the Masonic fraternity. And this is his comment about the coming changes. Quote, a new day is dawning for Freemasonry from the insufficiency of theology and the hopelessness of materialism. Men are turning to seek the God of philosophy, unquote. Notice that Mr. Hall has said that current theology, obviously current religion, has proven insufficient. Also, he feels that materialism, meaning the right to private property, is also a failure. But more importantly, he points out that this new God of the Freemasons is somehow different from the God of the Jews and Christians, as will be illustrated later. Some of the Masons believe that the God of the Bible is a God of evil. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, perhaps the founder of the current New Age movement, has also determined that the Masons are somehow supportive of her religious views. She wrote this in her book entitled The Secret Doctrine. Quote, At the end of the 18th and the beginning of the 19th centuries, many Freemasons traveled to Tibet where they were initiated into the esoteric defined as intended for or understood by only a chosen few as an inner group of disciples or initiates by an esoteric order of the Masters of Wisdom." Unquote. It should be expected that she would support the Masonic Fraternity. In 1875, she founded an organization called the Theosophical Society, basically dedicated to teaching the world about her new secret religion. One of the earliest members of that organization was Albert Pike, later to become the Sovereign Grand Commander of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. Albert Pike, who later became a 33rd degree Mason, the highest degree attainable also saw that there were some significant changes coming and that he was supportive of those changes. He wrote the following in his book entitled Morals and Dogma. Quote, We can look on all the evils of the world and see that it is only the hour before sunrise and that the light is coming. Unquote. Now, if Mr. Hall is right, the evils that his fellow Mason Albert Pike saw are connected to current religion, and that which is coming is somehow different from these religious views. Mr. Hall, who is mentioned previously as another 33rd degree Mason, also wrote that a new day was coming and that it was not too far into the future. Quote, a new light is breaking in the East. The significance of the location the East, I have already pointed out, it is the point where the sun rises. A more glorious day is at hand the rule of the philosophic elect, the dream of the ages, will yet be realized and is not too far distant. Unquote. So, Mr. Hall is also expecting that these changes are about to occur in the not too distant future. 
Someone who attempted to zero in on when these changes were expected to occur was Alice Bailey, previously mentioned. She wrote about when she thought the New Age would arrive. Quote, Eventually, there will appear the Church Universal, and its definite outlines will appear towards the close of this century, unquote. And you have already seen the emergence of the Universalist Church. Since she wrote early in the 20th century, we can see that she was predicting the eventual arrival of the New Age sometime around the 1990s. This estimate of that date is not too far wrong, as will be demonstrated later in this series of programs. Whatever is coming in the future, some New Agers have told us that they expect that it will last for a long time. One such writer is Ruth Montgomery, who wrote that she saw that the new religion would rule the earth for a thousand years. She wrote the following in her book entitled Herald for the New Age. Quote, the New Age, the millennium, a millennium is a period of one thousand years, will see an end to that strife at least for a thousand years, unquote. Now, just what the New Age religion that will last for at least 1,000 years on Earth, what is it? One who attempted to answer that question was Constance Cumbie in her book entitled The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow. She wrote that these were the basic tenets of the new religion. Listen closely. The plan for the future includes the installation of a new world messiah, the implementation of a new world government and new world religion under Maitreya, an individual who will be examined later in this series of programs. Two, a universal credit card system will be implemented as a cashless society. Three, a world food authority will control all of the world's food supply. Four, a universal tax. Five, a universal draft. And six, they intend on utterly rooting out people who believe the Bible and worship God and to completely stamp out Christianity from the face of this earth. As was discussed prior to this summary, certain people have indicated that they see the Catholic Church as an enemy. Here, Mrs. Cumbie says that they see not only Catholicism as the enemy, they also see all of Christianity as an enemy. Whatever the New Agers believe in, folks, it appears to be growing in popularity. Bantam Books, one of this nation's leading publishing houses, has reported that the sales of their New Age titles has increased tenfold in the past decade. Time Magazine reports that the number of New Age bookstores has doubled in the past five years to a total of about 2,500 according to an article in Forbes magazine, quote, publishers estimate that total sales of New Age titles today are at least $100 million at retail, unquote. So whatever they believe in, many believe in it. But perhaps the most insightful comment about the nature of what the New Age religion believe in and who they worship as their god was written by Mrs. Cumbie in her book entitled The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow. She wrote that they had... Quote, the intent of bringing about a new world order, an order that writes God out of the picture and deifies Lucifer, unquote. So if Mrs. Cumbie and the other writers on the subject are right, the New Age movement needs to be studied in some depth. We know that the goal of Freemasonry, at least that which is stated, is to bring about the new man, the illumined man, and the number of the men is 666.